So in somewhat of uh, in the NMP, uh, government has released two examples. One is of Australia, other one is of Indonesia. So let's look into Australia's example first. Um, the federal government of Australia um, has commissioned uh, the Rotary Commission in 2013 to come up with, 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 with a plan or, or a list of assets that can be driven through the asset recycling uh, or, or the asset monetization. And by 2018, about three out of uh, eight Australian uh, states in Australia uh, and, and, and have agreed for this particular uh, asset monetization and about 12 projects were uh, monetized uh, all of which like uh, the, the federal government uh, paid about uh, um, 3 billion Australian dollars as incentives to the states. Uh, this entire asset monetization has unlocked uh, about 17 billion dollars uh, USD, uh, which with the the federal government in turn invested in, in building the yeah, in infrastructure. That's a success story. Um, and what are the key takeaways from the uh, from the asset recycling of Australia? Uh, the the major uh, uh, takeaway is the consensus between state and federal government. Uh, if if you have noticed that this uh, even before starting with with, with the entire process, um, the states have been asked. To furnish their list of assets, they would they would like to um, include under asset monetization. Uh, so there should be consensus between state and uh, you know, federal government. Whereas in within in, in the current uh, ambit of what Indian government is uh, considering as NMP, uh, yeah, it does not doesn't seem to be doing this in some manner. For example, uh, the the finance minister of Tamil Nadu has. Has commented in, in, in the similar lines, wherein he said that most of these so-called union assets, uh, I, I, I think it's his words, not mine, but, uh, that uh, these assets uh, become assets with some states' investment as well in terms of land, power, uh, um, water, etc. So, how can his comment is how can this be considered? Purely as a center center asset, and how how is that uh, center is going forward in in, in 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 putting them under under the hammer without even consulting with the states? So definitely, there there look it seems that there is not clear consensus between states and and union in 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 this particular example of NMP for India in in, in India's case. So. Yeah, going back to the Australia example, the, uh, Australia had this consensus between state and federal government. Then uh, the second point is a time-bound approach. Uh, uh, they found out that if, if we do this entire process in a time-bound manner, that would bring in, comma, uh, in competitiveness because people would like to uh, not lose out on that opportunity. Uh, three, uh, incentives, incentivizing the states is very important. Um, I and mean, we can see even even under, under the uh, the Indian government's NMP plan, there is a scheme for in incentivizing the states, right? Which is very important. And uh, and, and the last uh, uh, takeaway from the Australia's example is um, essentially the, it's a bottom of approach wherein states would furnish their list of assets and then validated by the uh, federal government and thereby validated by the federal government. So these are the four takeaways from Australia example. Now let's come to the Indonesia example, which is a very recent one. Uh, the Indonesian government has um, launched this limited concession scheme into in Feb 2020. Uh, it's a very recent example. Uh, in, in this particular scheme kind of is an alternative to the PPPs, the public private partnerships, uh, wherein the Indonesian government, government hopes that uh, would help them connect their vast regions to different in infrastructure pipelines um, which would foster the economic growth uh, for, for Indonesia uh, and I believe since it's a, it's a very recent uh, plan we do not yet have the uh, results uh, to talk about.